I'm Dana, welcome to Made Every Day. I love giving handmade gifts to my friends and I especially love baby gifts. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make the perfect little set of burp claws, three in a bundle, and they'll have all your friends and babies wishing they had their own pile. So let's get started. Every mom needs a burp cloth, or 10. Whether you're nursing or bottle feeding, they're just the perfect thing to stick under the baby's neck while they're drinking, to put over your shoulder while they're burping, and they can even double as a toy. Many times I found my kids in the back seat, chewing on it, playing with it as they're sitting in their car seat. When I first started out my business, I used to make and sell these in an online shop in cute little bundles of three. Now I mostly just give them as gifts, and they're my favorite thing to give because not only are they really useful, but they're so stinking cute. Here's what you need. Cotton fabric and cotton chenille fabric. Now the most important thing when it comes to making a burp cloth is you want a fabric that is super absorbent. So it can sop up all those little milk dribbles, spit up, things like that. You have a few options. You can use terry cloth, which is what towels are made of, or you can even buy some cloth diapers to use at the back. What I like to use is this chenille fabric. And it's super soft, it has these little piles of fabric on top, which makes it really absorbent. I love to buy it online for about $12 a yard, and I found that if I cut them nine and a half by 16 and a half inches, I can get 12 out of a yard. It's really awesome. And I even created this little template for myself to make it easy for cutting. I cut cardstock, I lay it down, I cut around, and I cut more, and I cut, and I cut, and now I have this awesome pile ready to go when I need to make burp claws. Now let's cut our other fabric. Okay, I've got some standard quilting cotton here, which is a great weight for a burp cloth. Just gonna put my chenille right over the top. And if you have a different cotton fabric that's not quite as heavy as quilting cotton, sometimes I'll add an extra layer in between, just another white cotton fabric or something like that. And then just cut right around. It's so nice having all these things pre-cut. Then you can just go, go, go. Okay, set this aside. And what we're going to do, this is kind of like sewing a pillow. You're gonna leave a small opening so we can get our hand in and out, and then we're going to sew around the edges. So let's pin that in place. And I'd like to just leave an opening just big enough for your hand. You don't have to pin in a ton of places, just enough to keep it together. And then one more thing I like to add are these cute little labels. I had them made online and they add just that kind of custom feel to the things that you make. So I'm gonna stick that in there. Oh, about, I don't know, a few inches from the bottom. And now we're ready to sew. I'm just threading my machine here. I'm starting with the bobbin. That just goes in the bottom of your machine. You wanna use a thread color that will coordinate with your fabric because you will actually see it on the outside after we top stitch on it. So I am just using white. Just follow all the instructions around on your machine. And then just go over here and press this favorite little button of mine. Boom, it threads for me. Okay, we're ready to sew. Remember that we're leaving an opening. We're gonna start at the start point and go all the way around to the stop point. Do a little back stitch at the beginning. Whoa, if you feel like you're going too fast, just adjust your speed control right here. There we go. And I'm using about a half inch seam allowance. You could use 3 8 inch. It doesn't really matter as long as everything is sewn together. Okay, pivot and turn and go down the next side. These come together really quickly, which makes it an awesome gift. Then you don't have to spend a lot of time. In fact, you probably would spend less time sewing three burp claws than you would driving to the store to find something. Okay, we get to that corner, stop, lift, pivot and turn, go down the next side. And just like that, we're back to the stop point. So do a little back stitch and then cut your threads with my favorite cutting function. Okay. Now we wanna trim all those little corners with our scissors. This will help it just to get those corners to stick out nicely. Do all four, and then turn the whole thing right side out. 
This is always the fun like, ta-da, moment. See how well it worked. Oh, and look, perfect, our little labels right there. Okay, make sure you press all of those corners out with your finger. There we go, just like that. And careful with chenille, it flies everywhere. Okay, that's looking awesome. Now we need to finish off this bottom part, so grab your pins again. And we're just gonna pin that little opening closed. And then we're gonna sew a top stitch, which is a stitch that just shows up on the outside. We're gonna sew that all the way around the entire thing and it will sew this little opening closed. So go back to your machine. Do a little back stitch. And I'm sewing about 1 8 of an inch from the edge of my fabric. Just go all the way down. Pivot and turn and go all the way around again. You know this drill really well. Okay, I made it back to the beginning. Do a back stitch, cut my threads. Okay, one more thing I wanna do is to sew two more lines right on top that cuts my burp cloth into thirds. That just makes it a little easier to carry and it stays together better. So what I'm gonna do, so you don't need to measure anything, just fold it and kinda eyeball it. Okay, that's where my first line should go, right there. Stick it under. And then just sew a line. Again, you don't have to be totally precise. I'm just kind of eyeballing this, going straight across. If you have a fabric with a line in it or some geometric shapes, that helps a little bit easier to sew straight lines. Okay, bring it back over, fold it again. Okay, that's where our next line should go. Back to the machine. Do a little forward and back stitch. Just eyeball it as you go down. It doesn't need to be precise. Do another back stitch. Okay, there we go. Now let me show you how I wrap them up. Now the final thing I like to do is to take a little lint roller and just brush it right on top because you'll be amazed at how many little pieces of chenille are all over the place. Okay, that looks good and you know, before you walk out of the house, many times I've done that, showing up to pick up the kids from school. Okay, fold it into thirds, place it on top, and then, if you remember from my trusty how to tie a bow video, let's just tie this around. You could add a little label, or you could wrap it up with a bunch of other fun baby gifts. Okay, there you go. For more ideas and tutorials, visit my website, madeeveryday.com. And for more information on sewing machines, go to babylock.com, where it's all for the love of sewing. I'll see you next time.